Celeron. Celeron is Intel's budget processor line designed for simple, everyday computing. When Celeron first appeared in the late 1990s, it was a response to a problem Intel had created for itself. Its flagship processors were too expensive for the average family PC. People didn't need cutting-edge performance just to check email or type school assignments. So Intel stripped down the architecture of its higher-end chips, cut cache sizes, lowered clock speeds, and sold them at a fraction of the cost. The result was Celeron. You'd find them in affordable desktops at Walmart, in low-cost laptops for students, in library terminals, machines that didn't need to do much, but had to keep running day after day. They weren't glamorous. In fact, they were sometimes mocked by enthusiasts for being slow. But that misses their role. Celeron wasn't about power. It was about access. Millions of households got their first taste of the internet on a Celeron-powered machine. For many, it was the gateway chip, the modest entry ticket into the digital age. Pentium. Pentium is Intel's legendary consumer processor brand, once synonymous with the very idea of a personal computer. When Intel launched Pentium in 1993, it changed how people talked about CPUs. Suddenly, Pentium wasn't just a technical term, it was a household word. Parents buying a new computer would ask, is it a Pentium? In the same way they might ask if a car had air conditioning. The early models, like the Pentium 2 and Pentium 3, powered everything from office desktops to home gaming rigs. By the time Pentium 4 arrived, clock speeds were soaring past 3 GHz, and the name had become a symbol of progress itself. Advertising played a huge role. Those colorful Intel Inside stickers made the chip feel like the beating heart of the machine. But as technology moved forward, Pentium's role shifted. It no longer represented the cutting edge, but instead became a middle ground, sitting above Celeron, but below the core family. Even so, the Pentium name carries nostalgia. It reminds us of dial-up tones, bulky beige towers, and the excitement of the early internet era, when owning a Pentium meant you had arrived in the future. Core i3 Core i3 is Intel's entry-level chip in the Core family, aimed at users who need a balance between affordability and everyday speed. When Intel rolled out the Core branding in 2006, it needed a way to organize processors so people could actually understand what they were buying. Core i3 became the accessible tier, the chip for students writing papers, families streaming Netflix, or offices running spreadsheets all day. It wasn't designed for extreme multitasking or high-end gaming, but it didn't have to be. For most people, it was fast enough, which was a powerful idea in a market full of confusing specs. Over the years, Core i3 has evolved, gaining more cores, better integrated graphics, and efficiency that puts old Pentiums to shame. If you've ever used a slim Ultrabook or a budget-friendly desktop that felt snappy without breaking the bank, chances are it had a Core i3 inside. It's the quiet workhorse that keeps modern life running smoothly, proving that not every CPU has to be a monster to make an impact. Core i5 Core i5 is the mainstream processor line that became the default choice for millions of PC buyers. If Core i3 is the steady commuter car, Core i5 is the sedan that can also handle a road trip. Launched alongside the Core brand, i5 quickly earned a reputation for balance, offering more cores and higher clock speeds than i3, but without the premium price of i7. That sweet spot made it the go-to for gamers building their first rig, professionals working from home, and companies buying bulk office PCs. Over time, as games demanded more processing power and video editing became common on personal machines, Core i5 expanded its capabilities. Hyper-threading appeared in later generations, Turbo Boost pushed speeds higher, and suddenly the i5 wasn't just good enough, it was genuinely powerful. Think of all the laptops that became college essentials, or the desktop towers that fueled the rise of YouTube creators in the 2000s tens. Many of them ran on i5. It's the processor line that showed performance didn't have to be exclusive to enthusiasts. It could be mainstream. Core i7 Core i7 is Intel's long-standing high-performance line, built for enthusiasts and professionals who expect more than fast enough. When it debuted, Core i7 instantly stood out as the chip that pushed boundaries. It offered more cores, more threads, larger caches, and higher clock speeds than the mid-tier i5. This was the processor for people editing high-resolution video, running CAD software, or playing the latest games on ultra settings. For years, if you walked into a tech store and asked for the best computer, the salesperson would point you to Core i7. 
it became a badge of power. Your machine wasn't just capable, it was elite. As Intel refined the architecture, i7 processors became even more versatile, handling streaming and gaming at the same time, supporting 4K workflows, and anchoring laptops that doubled as mobile studios. It represented the line where everyday performance ended and professional-grade computing began, giving creators and gamers the headroom to keep up with demanding workloads. Core i9 Core i9 is Intel's flagship consumer CPU line, designed for extreme performance and no compromises. Introduced in 2017, Core i9 marked a new chapter. It was Intel's answer to rising competition and the growing appetite for power-hungry tasks. With higher core counts, blistering turbo speeds, and features once reserved for workstations, i9 processors transformed desktops into serious performance machines. These chips are found in gaming PCs built for 240 Hertz monitors, content creation rigs handling 8K video, and laptops that blur the line between portable and desktop class power. But the i9 wasn't just about raw numbers, it was about prestige. Owning a Core i9 meant you weren't settling for mid-range, you were investing in the best Intel had to offer. For streamers, engineers, and digital artists, the i9 delivered a kind of overhead that future-proofed their systems. It cemented Intel's top-tier category, ensuring that when someone wanted the absolute peak of consumer computing, they knew exactly which name to look for. Xeon Xeon is Intel's line of workstation and server processors, built for reliability, stability, and non-stop workloads. Unlike the Core series meant for personal computers, Xeon chips are the backbone of data centers, professional studios, and enterprise systems. They often support features that consumers never see, error-correcting code, ECC memory, to prevent data corruption, massive cache sizes, and the to-run-in-multi-socket configurations where multiple CPUs work together. A Xeon processor doesn't just crunch numbers quickly, it does so continuously day and night, without failure. Hospitals rely on Xeons to keep patient databases available. Banks depend on them to process transactions instantly. Animation studios render entire films on clusters of Xeon-powered servers. While you won't see them in gaming rigs, their role is critical. They're the unseen engines that keep much of the digital world operating smoothly. The focus here isn't flashy performance, but rock-solid dependability when failure isn't an option. Adam Atom is Intel's family of ultra-low power processors, created to bring computing into small, mobile, and embedded devices. First released in 2008, Atom chips were designed to sip power rather than guzzle it. You found them inside early netbooks, thin client systems, and low-cost laptops that prioritized battery life over raw speed. While they couldn't compete with core processors in terms of performance, they opened the door for computing to spread into places it hadn't gone before. Tiny devices, tablets, and embedded systems running quietly in the background. Atom chips made possible the rise of inexpensive, portable computers that connected more people to the internet for the first time. Over time, Intel steered Atom towards specialized markets, network equipment, Internet of Things devices, and compact industrial systems. Their strength wasn't in speed, but in efficiency, processing tasks continuously while barely generating heat. Atom reminded the tech world that not every chip needs to be the fastest. Sometimes, the real breakthrough is making computing small, silent, and power conscious. Done watching? If you like this video, hit subscribe for more cool stuff.